In this uh, brief video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use R. You see I have it open in the upper left uh, uh, corner here in a, w a separate window uh, to run a t-test. In the bottom left, uh, this is from our Blackboard course site, uh, a link under the learning module one. I think it's the top one as it stands right now when I recorded this. And these are the instructions and we're going to follow them. Uh, they may not all be showing up there, but uh, I have the paper in front of me. Uh, I guess I can go over and scroll down over there to try to I use the wrong scroll bar, use this scroll bar. Okay, let's get started. So here are the two sources on YouTube that I used uh, to get this information. And so we've got a couple of steps before we actually go to code, to the R. Uh, and uh, what I ha have over here on the right is I've opened up uh, my uh, first data set that we had generated in class with the random number generator. And I use the smokers and non-smokers. And just to make it easy, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy my data, just my raw data, not the rest of it. Uh, and I'm going to put it into a new uh, file, a new spreadsheet paste. And then I'm going to save it. I mean, we presume you had it saved as in Excel, what we did in the previous one. But now we want to save it as a tab delimited file. So tab delimited, because this is the one of the formats. It's the format we're going to use in this example of using R. Uh, and let's call it, uh, again, uh, sticking with the same labeling. Okay, so uh, it's just telling us the multiple sheets down here uh, don't go into that type. We just click OK, and then yes, we want to go. We want to actually save it as a. Sometime you should read that before you click. But when you click yes, it this does save it as a, a the file. So what I want to do is close it now. No need to save because we just saved it. Because uh, if it's open, it may not pull into another software. So, so it might give you the error that somebody else is using it. So we have our file in the tab delimited. Now what we're going to do, you see down here, is the R code. And we're going to type in uh, just what we see here. Uh, first, however, what we're going to do is going to go to our um, folder. Let's see. Got to... When I'm recording, it doesn't show my things down here. So, uh, actually, I can do this, can't I? And go to Documents. And I should have. Uh, so, what we want to do is we want to get the. Uh, want to drag, click on this, drag it, and drop it in here. So, it's going to recognize it as an error command. But what we have is we now have the, the, the location, the path to our file uh, in the R. Uh, programming window. So now what we can do is we can type this in. When we get to where we need this information here, we just copy it from up here and we paste it into there. Okay, so the first thing we're, we want to do is make sure you're actively in this window here to type. <laughs> I do that, make that mistake too often. Uh, we're telling it, we, we could put any name here, but I want to keep it constant. So it's the smokers. Um, we're telling it when you open this table, what are you going to title it within the the RAM, the temporary memory uh, of R that it's accessing uh, to act on things. Okay, so uh, we could call it anything. You could call it X just to be simple, but I'm going to use that. And then the uh, lesser than sign, and then the dash is the arrow, and we're basically saying a command: bring something in and name it what we see on the left there. Um, so read dot table open parentheses and now we want to come up here and just copy not the parentheses but just from quotation mark to quotation mark you press on your keyboard control C or you can probably do a right click and copy and then we come here back where we were and control V to paste it Okay, so now you see where we are here, and then we'll put a comma. Let me slide this over. Oh, that's the wrong one. Need to slide this bar over. Sorry. Okay, 
We can come back up here. Type comma and header equals true. That means our, we're telling it our headers are in the first row up here, right? Um, and it is separated equals open quotation backward slash T that tells it that's tab delimited and close our uh, parentheses. Okay, so the file is now open. We didn't see anything, right? But if we now type str stream, I guess is what that is, str, and well, make sure you're in the window. <laughs> I'm always forgetting to do that. Okay, str is the command, and smokers was the title we gave it, right? Close parentheses. Okay, and this is just showing us uh, what we uh, had in the file. Um, it is 25 observations and two variables, right? Our sample size is 25 and we have two columns. So that's what that told us. Now, if we just type in the name of the file, or of the table that we created within the okay click in the window uh, to go from the the blue to the just the red flashing thing I'm using the left arrow on the keyboard so if we just type in the name of the data table that we now have in the resident memory <laughs> the transient memory short-term memory of R then uh, there it is so we see our table right so we have recreated what we have, uh, what we dumped into our text file, okay? And then these are separated, uh, well, they're not separated by tabs anymore, uh, but they were separated by tabs in the original file. But that's how it knew how to parse these to where they belong, okay? It added a count uh, on the left side. Okay, so next, uh, because that's, kind of long. I gotta scroll down to the next page. I know this is an awkward way of doing it. <laughs> Sorry about that. I should just do it off the paper in front of me, but anyway, this let, lets you look at what we're doing down here. Now we can do uh, so you see the solid line is the end of what the output and then the little greater than sign looks like the command line up here. So now we will type in, there I just clicked again with my mouse to get it, uh, S-U-M-M-A-R-Y, S-M-O-K-E-R-S, -E and we hit enter and we get our, our table, minimum for the smokers and non-smokers, minimum. Uh, first quartile, median, mean, third quartile, and the maximum. Okay, so this just gives you, lets you get an assessment. Minimum to maximum gives you what? Your range. Uh, and you have your quartiles around the measures of central tendencies. <clears throat> so I re refer you to the textbook, you know, The Essential Statistics for Pharmaceutical Sciences, uh, by Philip Rowe. Uh, that we're using in the class to uh, look up the meaning of some of these. You should be reading your chapters now. Okay, so we got through some descriptive statistics. Let's get down to the next page here. <clears throat> now, uh, if, if we couldn't see our, if we wanted to type in a code line, but say we're at the bottom of the numbers here and we couldn't remember what our column names were, uh, which is what we're going to need to put in the, for the, the t-test command, because if it was multiple columns and we just wanted to compare two of them, uh, we need to tell it um, where to go and look for these. Okay, so now uh, we would just type names, uh, get back in the active window up here, names, and of course, what's the table? Okay, so those are our column headers. So now to do the t-test, you see it down here. It's t.test. 
Now, there are more sophisticated ways of doing it. This is just going to run, a, I guess, a, a standard t-test. We'll have to investigate further to find out exactly what type of uh, t-test this is running. There are different ones, uh, but we'll discuss that in class. Um, S-M-O-K-E-R-S, that's the source. The dollar sign is telling it, uh, you know, what unique identifier to look for uh, in the headers. S-M-O-K-E-R-S. This is where it's kind of confusing that we named our data table within R the same as one of our columns. But anyway, this is our data table after before the dollar sign. After the dollar sign is the uh, column header that we want it to go uh, and uh, you know use the numbers below that. Comma tells where it's for giving it some more information. And same table, and then non dash smokers. So I'm just noticing it has a dot there. I guess it automatically recognizes the dash to be the dot. I never tried to put a dot in there. But anyway, uh, down here I did put in the dash. It's in our original and it recognized it. So let's do that. And we close and we hit. And so it's a Welch two sample t-test. So we'll have to do a Google search on this to find out exactly. Or maybe it's in our textbook. Um, so we have data, uh, smokers and non-smokers. Uh, we get a t-value, a degrees of freedom, probability, definitely uh, much less than um, uh, 0.05, which is what we would have set it at before we started our experiment. Um, and, you know, I, I predetermined that by <laughs> offsetting my averages, creating what I call the effect size, the difference between the means, uh, by a factor of 10. And I also uh, kept my, uh, I used a 10% coefficient of variation uh, for each of these. Uh, so you pretty much can expect, and with a pretty decent sample size, with, with those parameters, let's say, those conditions for setting up two data files, uh, you know these are going to be very statistically significantly different from each other. Okay, and this uh, t-test, the Welch 2 sample, uh, proved that to, to be correct. So, uh, the alternative hypothesis, true difference in means is not equal to zero, okay? If um, x bar 1 minus x bar 2, the mean differences, if that equaled zero, then we would not get a, a significant p-value because uh, we were, would be supporting our uh, hypothesis, uh, the h sub naught, Um, <clears throat> where the means would be equal. And then the H sub I, I think it is, for the alternative hypothesis, is that they're not equal. So our data, our test results support the alternative hypothesis, which is just kind of the way you do it uh, in statistical testing. So there's a 95% confidence interval. We'll discuss the, the relevance of that in class uh, as I even become more and more familiar with it. Um, but basically we have uh, 46.4 to 56, uh, and then the sample estimates uh, the mean of x and mean of y. Okay, so you now have uh, completed a uh, t-test in R. So uh, also with R, you can do this, select and then control C on the keyboard and you can come in and do a control V and then there's your code. Of course you gotta separate your code out from amongst all the other things in there but uh, you can capture your code in an instructional manual similar as I did down here and of course you can uh, save uh, this to a file as well. So I don't have a specific assignment for you on that um, so uh, I'm not going to worry about it. But what we are going to do now, uh, quickly, since I think I have a few more minutes, we're going to run this in Excel. So you see there's very different um, types of, of t-tests that we're seeing here. And I'm going to just use the, the, the two sample assuming equal variances. Okay, so... Um, Remember, you square these to get the, the variance. 
Okay. So we click. We got our ranges, variable one. So I'm going to make that one. I'm going to assume that it has a, a header.